Hi biologists. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to move on to chapter 9 in the text and this is the environment chapter. And to begin with we're going to look at ecosystems. Now these five pictures show different ecosystems. So we've got an arctic region, we've got a woodland, some fields, a pond and some sand dunes. Now the ecosystem is made up of all the living organisms in the region plus the non-living parts of the environment. So for instance, for the sand dune, is it windy? Is it salty? Is it hot? Is it sunny? Is it cold? What's the environment like that the living organisms within the environment have to deal with? If we look at the Arctic region, there we've got a polar bear, but we're also going to have sea lions, we're going to have fish, we're going to have the fact that it gets really cold, that it's really windy, it's very wet and that it's salty. So the ecosystem is all of that interacting together. So if we focus in a little bit more on the Arctic ecosystem, if we're just then looking at the living part of the, the ecosystem, so the living organisms within it, we call that part the community. And it's how those living organisms work together that forms the community. So here, for instance, we've got a walrus, we've got polar bear, we've got um, some krill, some fish, some algae, sea lions. So the, those are all the living parts of the ecosystem. And so we call those the community. And we can then focus down in on one of the particular species in the community. So, for instance, the polar bears. And we could count how many polar bears were in that particular ecosystem. And that would be referred to as the population. So we could count the population of polar bears. We could look at the population of krill, the population of walruses, the population of Arctic cod, which type of fish. We could look at any type of population. Now, you scientists do estimate populations they don't actually go around counting every single individual because that would be ridiculous um, so all of these population um, figures that that you see on science websites are going to be estimates so here we've got something called a food chain and the food chain shows us the movement of energy from organism to organism basically what eats what, which you might have learned at Key Stage 2, but actually at Key Stage 4, it shows the movement of energy. And we always start with the algae or the plant, because the algae or the plant is getting its energy from the sun. So it uses sunlight energy, as you've just learned in the last topic, in photosynthesis to turn to create glucose, and that's its food. The krill then eats the algae and so it's being given energy from the algae, that's its food. The krill is then eaten by the cod, and so the energy passes along, then it goes up into the ring seal, and then it goes up into the polar bear. And so this is referred to as a food chain. Now there's a few labels that you need to know. Um, that we can put onto the different organisms within a food chain. So what I suggest you do is pause the video now, have a look at the labels at the bottom and see if you can match the label to the correct organism. Now, some of them um, will have more than one label. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at that. Um, and so these are the answers. So the algae is referred to as a producer because it produces its own food using photosynthesis. Then all of the other organisms are consumers. So the first consumer, the first eater, is the krill. Then we've got the secondary consumer, which is the Arctic cod. We've got the tertiary consumer, which is the ring seal. We could say we've got quaternary consumer, which would be the polar bear. Um, but the polar bear is also referred to as the top predator because it is the hunter and nothing else hunts it or eats it. Humans will, um, but they don't rely on that as their food source. Just like um, if you think about a lion, lions will eat humans if there's one around, but they don't rely on humans as their food source. And so therefore we stop the food chain at their usual food source. 
Okay, so the polar bear is the top predator, and then the ring seal would be the prey of the polar bear. We could say that the Arctic cod is the prey of the ring seal. Um, and in which case there, the ring seal is going to be the predator. The predator is always a hunter, the prey is the hunted, and what is, is being caught. Um, then we have herbivores. Herbivores only eat plants. Carnivores eat animals only. Um, and so we've got the Arctic cod, so carnivore, so is the ring seal, so is the polar bear. Um, Humans are actually omnivores because we eat plants and animals. And the way that you'd be able to tell actually which category an, an organism falls into is you would look at their teeth um, because hunters, so predators um, who eat um, carnivores, who eat meat, obviously like cats and tigers and um, polar bears, they will have really sharp, pointy canines so that they can kind of catch and pierce um their prey to kill their prey whereas if you think about a horse or a cow or a sheep you know they are herbivores and so they've got very flat teeth molars like we have which therefore you can grind your food so in reality of course uh organisms don't just line up in food chains it's much much more complicated that in the environment and so what we have are lots and lots of different food chains interacting with each other to form a food web and when we draw a food web we always put at the very bottom the producer and then we work our way up um, up the page as we go from organism to organism and as the energy passes from one organism to the next um, we go up the page each feeding stage in our food chain or our food web is referred to as a trophic level. Trophic is, um, if, you, if you look at the stem of the word, it, it stands for feeding. So it's like feeding level. OK, now the last little bit you have to know about food chains and food webs is what what happens if one of the organisms in the chain dies out. So, for instance, let's look here at the harbour seal. If the harbour seal died out, what do you think is going to happen to the population of the harp seals? OK, again, just have a pause the video for a minute. Have a think. What do you think will happen to their population? Will it increase? Will it decrease? Why? Um, and then the answer will be coming up shortly. OK, well, there's actually two things that could happen. And in your GCSE exam, you'd only have to mention one of them. So let's have a look at the food web here. I've crossed out the harbour seal. And so we're asking what's going to happen to the harp seals. Well, first of all, their population could decrease. And they could decrease because the polar bear, all of a sudden, doesn't have so much food to eat. And so it now has to eat more harp seals instead. So their population would fall. Alternatively, the harp seal population could increase and it could increase because all of a sudden there's more Arctic cod to be eaten because the, har um, the harbour seals aren't eating them anymore. And so now there's more food for the harp seal and therefore their population could increase. So there's always two ways of looking at those answers, but you'd only ever have to give one in an exam.